Tongues is given to you as a kickstart of the dynamo inside you. No matter what your problem is, give yourself a course and a diet. Small problem, one hour every day, normal. But when you see the thing change color, what I wonder to upgrade two hours. That is a diet. Then it's really critical, and you're still playing ten ten, and demons are slapping up and down. So you know which thing they push you for village. Now you know what they do. So what is doing you recommends what is your own prescription sir. for normal life to be maintained. One hour is okay. What well, is crisis? Ne crisis, and you're playing tennis football up and down. You're watching movie crisis. You're going oh The cold is is quenching. So as you're showering maximize time no time is to be wasted yes sir why you are funny you're in the bus i put it to yola nine hours don't shout i'm the harassing people i can speak it no 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 have you ever struggled with mental health depression fear marital pitfalls physical health challenges career challenges indecision, other issues of life, or would you just like to strengthen your spirituality? Then join men and women across the globe, breaking the limits and soaring high on the global prophetic prayer altar with Apostle Goodheart Obi Ikweme. Even in these challenging times, every weekday from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Greenwich Medium Time plus one, and 12 noon to 1 p.m. Greenwich Medium Time plus one. Available on internet radio at www.radio.rojic.org and on YouTube at GPPA TV, on Periscope at Goodheart O Ikweme. On Instagram at Apostle Goodheart and on Facebook at Apostle Goodheart. The Global Prophetic Prayer Altar. The surest way to get timely resources to stabilize your life in every area. Your unmerited mercy or favor made available to us. We give you praise. We receive. Oh Holy Spirit, we welcome you this afternoon. Oh, hallowed be your name, Almighty God. Hallowed be your name, Almighty God. Oh, Ragadagabaragadagada. Your name is to be. Hallowed Adonai, your name is to be hallowed Adonai, Can somebody just lift up the name of the Lord this afternoon? Rakatale Gabo Satare Gede Gaboro de Gede Gaboro Goria Ryan Eskipre Gede 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 Gaboro Goria. This is the launch hour with Jesus Rekatos Kabrahan de Rebos Kibran de Rebos Kalebrahan de Gede Gedea. He's here to do us good this afternoon. He was here before you even showed up because God keeps the time. Lazo Kapalia Zata. Can you hallow his name? Can you welcome his presence? Can you contend for your portion upon this altar this afternoon? Can you make up your mind that you will not live here the same way that you came? Can you contend and say, Father, my portion, oh God, in this upon this altar today, I will take it. No man will take my place. No man will take my portion. Hallowed be your name, O God. Hallowed be your name, O God. Your name is to be hallowed. Adonai. Lift up your voices. Begin to bless the name of our God. He is a good, good father. He is a good, good father. He is a good, good father. There is no shadow of turning with him. God is consistent. 
consistent. God is consistent. If he said it, he will do it. The Lord always does his part. Can you bless the name of the Father for being consistent in your life, for being consistent in your affairs? Can you bless him for he has done you no wrong? Can somebody just say, Father, you have done me no wrong. Since I was born, I am now getting old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. God, you have done me no wrong. God, you have done me no wrong. I judge you faithful. I find no fault in God. I find no fault in God. Can somebody declare this to the Father? I find no fault in you, and I judge you faithful. Oh, we come into your presence with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. You have done us no wrong. You provided all our needs. You supplied for us, oh God. You protected. You preserved my father. Your wisdom is past finding out. The things I don't understand, oh God, I know they are safe in you. Because you do all things well. You have healed. You have lifted. You have covered our heads in the day of battle. Is somebody blessing God? Oh, count your blessings. Count your blessings. You went out. You came back. And everybody at home completes. It is the doing of the Lord. Then you say, God, we judge you faithful. God, we judge you faithful. God, we judge you faithful. As Calibra and Deboroya, as Kalis Kabala Gazagadagadagada, as Kante Ketekadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadegadeg
How is it you have lived to your 70s and you go from place to place and the Lord suffers kings to do you no wrong? Despite their policies, despite what they do to strangers who don't know anything about them, he has suffered them to do you no wrong. Father, we honor you. Father, we bless you. Lava Santelebosiatana. Oh God, you are good. Your mercies and yours forever. Your mercies and yours forever. We are beneficiaries of your mercy. We are recipients of your mercy. We are beneficiaries of your mercies. We are recipients of your mercies. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory, glory, glory be to God. Good afternoon, everyone. Excuse me. <clears throat> and welcome to <clears throat> Lunch Hour with Jesus on the GPPA altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is in this place. He's here to do us good. And I just want you to be ready. You have to always come into the presence of God with expectations. In this place, it is all about Jesus. It's not about a man. It's all about Jesus. We are live on all our platforms at the moment. You can find us on Facebook. <clears throat> You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Facebook and um, Instagram at Apostle Goodheart. You can also find us on Periscope at Pastor Goodheart. We are also live on YouTube on G on, on GPPA TV, and you can also hook up and join us on on our online radio station www.radio.rogic.org. It's a good time to begin to. Um, send the links out to your friends, to your family members. It's a public holiday here in Nigeria today, so I know that you have some time to actually stay and engage on this altar. The Lord will do us good. Hallelujah. Before we go into a time of prayer, we are going to spend some time. Before we go into a time of prayer, we are going to spend some time reading our Sound of Revival devotional. The Lord has a word for us here. Today is April 10, and the title of our reading today is Redeemed for Exploits by the Blood. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1 verse 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And our Bible reading is taken from 2 Kings chapter 1 to chapter 3 and Psalm 101. We also have a Bible reading uh, we have a community on you version where you can read the Bible daily. Amen. I'll go ahead and read now. Sam Childers was a former gang biker, alcoholic and drug dealer whose life took a new turn when he got born again. In 1998, Sam joined a church mission trip to Sudan to help repair huts damaged in the Second Sudanese Civil War. While in Sudan, Sam came across the mutilated body of a child killed by a landmine. This experience shattered him and Sam made a pledge to God to do whatever he could to help the children of Sudan. In spite of war zone conditions, Sam embarked on a difficult project of building an orphanage near the Ugandan border. However, one night, a terrorist group known as the Lord's Resistance Army, LRA, attacked his orphanage and burnt it to the ground. After the orphanage was rebuilt, Sam fought the atrocities of the LRA as he led armed raids to rescue children from them. He worked in collaboration with the Sudan People's Liberation Army, SPLA, to fight the atrocities of the terrorist group. Through their operations, over 1,000 children have been rescued and sheltered in Sam's orphanage. In the United States, Sam pastors the church Shekinah Fellowship Church in Central City, Pen Pennsylvania. Through his ministry, very great impact has been made on the people of South Sudan. Today, Sam is internationally celebrated for his efforts in rescuing the children of Sudan. Despite Sam Childers' past life as a former drug dealer, by the power in the blood of Jesus, he was transformed to become a blessing to humanity. No matter how disheveled any destiny may initially appear, through the mystery of the blood, there can be restoration and divine completeness. This is why we should never give up on anyone we are called to preach the gospel to. 
We could never know the potential locked within any soul until it comes into full manifestation. When a building is under construction, to the untrained eyes, the building can look really messed up. But the architect knows that eventually, emerging from the, the mess is a beautiful structure. Our architect and master builder is God. He has designed the blueprint of our lives. And no matter how messed up things may sometimes seem, God is always at work behind the scenes to unveil his perfect will and plan. Indeed, everyone called of God is full of amazing potentials. If you do not yet look like it, know that your life is still under construction and that God has begun a good work in you and, and that God who has begun a good work in you will bring it to perfection. God says we are created after his image and likeness. We are designed to function as he does. Indeed, everyone called of God is born to be great. All we need is to be rightly positioned in Christ and every other thing will fall into place. Just as Sam's life was dramatically transformed, God is able to turn things around and cause us to become a wonder to our world. Today, whatever may be hindering your breaking forth into your glorious destiny is destroyed by the power in the blood of Jesus. By God's grace, every yoke is permanently broken. Indeed, by the mystery in the blood, the glory God has ordained for you in this season must surely come into full manifestation. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for unlocking the hidden potentials in me and using me to bring deliverance to mankind. By the power in the blood of Jesus, I receive divine strength to boldly proclaim your gospel and do mighty works in your name, in Jesus' name. Our quote is, for you to enjoy victory in the kingdom of God, you need to develop a kingdom mindset that thinks in line with the word of God. And this is taken from word by 222. I'll read it again. For you to enjoy victory in the kingdom of God, you need to develop a kingdom mindset that thinks in line with the word of God. Word by 222. Glory, glory, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I, 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 I can say that um, our reading from the Sound of Revival devotional already sets the tone for our time of prayer this afternoon. Hallelujah. I hope somebody is ready to pray. God is in the midst of us. We shall not be moved. Hallelujah. Today, um, we're going to be praying along the lines of this scripture. We'll begin here. And it says in Proverbs 12, verse 27, the slothful man roasted not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. Hallelujah. I'll read it again. The slothful man roasted not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. What does this mean and how do we pray in line with this scripture? The scripture is telling us that a slothful man will not roast what he took in hunting. So he went, he hunted, he hunted, but when it came, to, he had come back from hunting and the next steps in finishing what he started, he did not do it because he, because he was slothful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many of us who have prayed to God for many things and God has answered the prayers. And uh, many times we stop at the testimony that God answered my prayer. I asked him for a car. He gave me a car. I asked him for a job. He gave me a job. I asked him for money. He gave me money. But we stopped at the testimony. But we did not take, uh, we did not move on to the roasting. We testified of what we took in hunting, but we did not move on to the roasting. Hallelujah. This afternoon, we're going to be dealing with some things. We're going to be dealing with some of the issues that our asked to take responsibility for. And we'll be doing it in the place of prayer. Has God answered many prayers we have made? Yes. But those prayers were not supposed to stop there. Some of us asked God for children. And we came to testify. He gave me a child. But the next step in raising the children, what did we do with it? What did we do with it? Some of us asked God for jobs and said, God, I need a job. I need a job. And the Lord gave you a job. You got to the job and you became slothful on the job. You became lazy on the job. You became 
you began you began to complain about the job but the lord gave you the job the job was to deliver something else hallelujah you are going to be praying this afternoon you're going to be saying father that which i took in hunting the answer to prayer that came after i asked after i sought after i knocked after i asked of you you gave it to me i did not roast my hunting i did not roast what i took in hunting can somebody open their mouth this afternoon and first of all you begin to repent and say lord i went into hunting i went to you you said ask and you will receive i asked and i received you said seek and you will find i sought and i found you said knock and the door will be open i knocked and the door was open and father i stopped there i did not take that which i took in hunting i did not roasted i did not process it i did not go to the next level our god is a god of process when he gives you one thing he wants you to do much more with it can somebody open their mouth this afternoon and begin to pray and begin to repent and say father you've answered so many prayers that were supposed to be open doors to many other things but father i stopped at the point of that one eh? lord i cry out for mercy lord i repent before you the doors that you opened that were supposed to open many other doors and i just stopped at the testimony of one door i repent this afternoon our god is a god that looks for profiting our god is a god that looks for the profit in what he gave us but we did not roast what we took in hunting can somebody pray to the lord this afternoon and say god have mercy on me when you gave me a job that was supposed to be the open door to other things i stopped at the job and started to complain i don't like how my my boss behaves i don't like what this one does i don't know i don't like how much they are paying me forgetting that the open door that the lord gave me was supposed to open other doors can you repent and say god ah forgive me for not roasting what i took in hunting for not processing what i took in hunting that answer to prayer was not supposed to stop there that healing was not supposed to stop there you were supposed to go with your testimony and multiply it i uh, is somebody crying out to the lord for mercy you thought that the answer to prayer ended there no 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 it was meant to birth other things when you come from hunting if you do not roast what you took in hunting what you took in hunting will spoil what you took in hunting will get rotten can you ask the lord for mercy how many things have you taken in hunting you prayed and you saw it but you stopped right there you did not go ahead to roast what you took in hunting and it looks as if god did not do anything but god is faithful he answered that prayer but perhaps perhaps because you did not roast what you took in hunting that which you took in hunting became rotten is somebody crying out to god this afternoon for mercy how many prayers has god answered how many things has the lord given to you that you did nothing with father in the name of jesus we cry out for mercy we cry out for mercy everything i took in hunting but i did not roast lord i cry out for mercy this afternoon are you praying for yourself how many things has the lord given to you how many things has the lord done for you but you stopped there and you started asking for another thing meanwhile what he gave to you was supposed to become something else a demand was supposed to be placed on you based on what the lord did for you but it was not precious to you what god did for you was not precious to you the bible says the slothful man roasted not 
not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. Can you pray that the spirit of diligence will rest on you so that everything that you take in prayer, everything that you take in hunting, everything that you take in prayer, it will be precious to you and you will be diligent to use it. You will be diligent to multiply it. You will be diligent to replenish by it. For the love of all the things that you did that I wasted, I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. Is somebody praying? Is somebody praying? Is somebody praying? Ah, somebody saying God did not answer. It's not true. It's not true. He did. But did you roast what you took in hunting? Did you roast what you took in hunting? God gave you a ministry. Ah, and you went about shouting, the Lord has given me a ministry. The Lord has given me a ministry. But the Lord is asking you, what are you doing with the ministry? The Lord gave you a talent and you're like, I have a talent. I have a talent. But the Lord is asking, what have you done with the talent? Have you roasted what you took in hunting? Have you roasted what I gave to you? Are you processing it? I gave you the raw material. What have you done to make it a finished product? No man came empty. The Lord gave all of us something. But what have you done with it? Have you taken it to roast? Or you stopped at hunting? The game which you took in hunting can get rotten if you do not roast it. You are crying out to God. You are crying out to God. You are not disadvantaged in any way, but you have not taken your advantage and processed it. You have not taken your advantage and roasted it. No man is disadvantaged. Everybody has something from the Lord, but you went into hunting and you did not roast your game. Father, help me not to be slothful. Let that which I took in hunting be precious to me. Let that which I took in hunting be precious to me. Let, may I be diligent, oh God, with what you gave to me in hunting. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We are still praying. We are still praying. You see, when you look at all the parables of Jesus, it, they are all about the results of what he, he gives you as seed. That's what they are all about. The parables of the ten virgins, for instance. The Bible says, and five of them were wise, and five were foolish. It says, they that were foolish took their, lamp, took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps you see we all look the same until a demand to deliver something is placed on us we are all born again until a demand is placed on us we all look the same until they ask you for oil Aya, can somebody pray this afternoon you see the five virgins who took only lamps without oil by the time they realized they should have taken oil, they missed out on a moment of visitation. There is a preparedness that is required that brings about results in time, in time, in time, in time. Can somebody pray this afternoon and say, God, ah, let, let, let my life be different. Let me be different. Let me not have lamps without oil. Let me not look like everybody else. And when a demand is placed, on me, I cannot produce anything. Can you say, God, grant me grace to produce things, to produce things when demand is placed on it. Hey, when I take something in hunting, it's not enough to take the lamp. No, 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 no. You look the same when you take the lamp. You look like every hunter when you get the game. But the difference between you and the next one is if you roast what you took in hunting. It's if you put oil in the lamp. Can somebody pray this afternoon and say, God, in the name of Jesus, help me to be diligent, not to be excited about the mundane, but to do something about the 
what about the about the vessel you've given me about the talent you've given me about the gift you've given me about that which i took in hunting where is the oil in your lamp it's not enough to just flaunt the lamp and say i am a virgin i am one of the ones the lord called this is my lamp men are asking for oil demand is being placed for oil demand is being placed for oil where is the oil in your lamp what have you done with your lamp what have you done with what you took in hunting demand is being placed on the roasted um, game it's not enough to just catch the game you have to roast it it's not enough to get born again and have a lamp there has to be oil in your lamp it's not enough to be given one talent two talents five talents what have you done with the talent have you multiplied it god is looking for fruit god is looking for fruit god is looking for fruit can somebody cry out to the Lord let my life bring forth fruit the diligence required to bring forth fruit let my life bring forth fruit let my life bring forth fruit let my lamp have oil let my game be roasted let me put in the work can somebody pray and say God grace to put in the work grace to put in the work you live but to enter into rest can you say god grant me grace to labor to enter into rest we all look the same we all look the same until demand is placed on us when demand was placed the ones with oil made the court they when there were 10 virgins they all look the same but when demand was placed there were just five that made the court can you pray and say, God, help me to make the court. Help me to make the court. When demand is placed, let me come forth with something. Let me not be like that fig tree that had leaves all over it. But when demand was placed, there was no fruit. Is somebody praying? This is a very important prayer. This is how you live a full life at by roasting what you took in hunting. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying. We are still praying. We are still praying because it's so important what we are praying about. Oh, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says something in Isaiah 65 20, which I will tie to what we are praying about. It says, there shall be no more fence, an infant of days, nor an old man that has not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, and but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be a cost. But my emphasis here is, nor an old man that has not filled his days. We see this scripture many times and we are quick to say amen, but let's pay attention to this verse. There shall be no more fence, an infant of days, nor an old man that has not filled his days. That means you can be an old man, you can get into old age, but you have not filled your days. You can get things in hunting, but the job is not yet complete. The job is not yet complete because you've not roasted, because you've not filled your days. 
may we not get into our 80s 90s hundreds and we are looking back and saying kai my days were not filled i regret that i did not take what i i did not roast what i took in hunting you are going to pray for yourself this is about you this is about destiny <laughs> one of the reasons why destinies look like they are not fulfilled is because that which you should roast and fill up your days with you don't do it and then you get to seasons of your life and you are trying to get those times back you are trying to get those opportunities back and you don't get it and you begin to say ah i'm an old man now but my days are not full we have the advantage of being young at this point so this is the time to roast what you took in hunting this is the time to ensure that you fill up your days with the right content can somebody open their mouths in prayers and declare to the lord father in the name of jesus i will not be that old man whose days were not filled i will not be that old man whose days were not filled beginning now i begin to fill my days with the responsible action that I must take. I begin to fill my days with the things that I must do now. I begin to fill my days with the content that makes living being old, fruitful, and promising and fulfilling. Halama Santeria. Father, Lord God, even now in my youth, even now while I am young, even now when there is still strength in my body, I will not be slothful. I will not be slothful. I will be diligent to roast that which I took in in hunting i will be diligent to ensure there is oil in my lamp i will be diligent to fill up my days with the right content i will be diligent to fill up what is written of me in the volume of the books is somebody praying is somebody praying you have to be deliberate with life you have to be deliberate with destiny god is always faithful god always provides all you need but what do you do with it? What do you do with it? Can we pray for the grace to be diligent? Can we repent before the Father and say, God, I will be diligent? What has God given you that you are waiting for something to happen? No, no, no. You make it happen. Can you say, God, grace to be diligent? Lord, grace to be diligent. I will not be that old man whose days are not filled. I will not be that old man whose days are not filled. I will not be that old man whose days are not filled. No, God. My lamp will be filled with oil in the name of Jesus. While I have strength, I will roast what I took in hunting. While I have strength, I will take the raw materials God gave to me and I will turn them into finished products. While I have strength, I will bring solutions where there are problems in my world while I have strength. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. This scripture also implies something that many of us are not feeling our days. Many of us are not feeling our days. We are just going from one day to the next, not feeling our days. We're not being intentional. We're not being intentional. We're not being intentional. We're we're just going from one day to the next. You're going to a job. You're doing one thing, doing the next thing. But you're not filling the days with the requisite content that it must have for you to be an old man who looks back and sees your days filled. Can you pray to God this afternoon and say, teach me to number my days that I might apply my heart to wisdom. It is wisdom to be diligent. It is wisdom to roast what you took in hunting. It is wisdom to put oil in your lamp so that when demand is placed on you, you are able to do something something about it can somebody lift up their voices and pray to the lord and say give me wisdom oh god teach me to number my days that i might apply my heart to wisdom teach me to number my days teach me to number my days and to fill up my days and to roast what i took in hunting this is how you fill your days doing something with the raw materials filling up 
your days with the content of turning what God gave you into something that is a finished product. Help me, Lord, to follow through. Help me, Lord, to follow through. Help me, Lord, to follow through. Help me, Lord, to be diligent. Help me, Lord, not to despise the days of little beginnings. Help me, Lord, not to despise the talent. Help me, Lord, not to despise the giftings. Help me, Lord, not to despise the opportunities. Help me, Lord, not to despise what I took in hunting. We are praying, we are praying, we are praying. Can you fill up your days in the place of prayer? Fill up your days with wisdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're still praying and pushing this. We're still pushing this because we must roast what we took in hunting. There are too many things that God has given us that are just lying fallow, that are just lying fallow, unused, unused. And people are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. People are waiting for you to turn what he gave you in hunting into a roast meat that they can eat, that they can benefit from. But you are sitting down there. The Bible says, Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3 to 5, it says, through wisdom is a house builded. Hallelujah. And by understanding, the house is established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. <laughs> and in verse 5, it says, a wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. Hallelujah. We will pray verse 5 um, um, later on, but we're going to start with praying for certain things. It says, through wisdom is a house builder. So you've taken something in hunting. Peradventure, you don't know what to do with what you've taken in hunting. You don't know how to roast it. But the Lord is saying, through wisdom, a house is builded. Through wisdom, you will roast that thing. Can you begin to pray and say, Father, grant me wisdom upon this altar to roast what I took in hunting. Grant me wisdom to build that house. Grant me wisdom to do what I must do with the raw materials. Grant me wisdom. A house is built from raw materials. A house is built from raw Raw materials. A roast beef is built from a, from a, from a, from from a game that you took in hunting. Can you pray and say, God, grant me wisdom to build. Grant me wisdom to roast. Show me how to do it, oh God. Show me how to do it, oh God. I hope somebody is praying. I hope somebody is praying. Sometimes there are gaps in our lives because we don't have the wisdom. We don't know what to apply. We don't know what to do with what we have oh a lake has yet a lot have mercy grant us wisdom upon this altar and let every man begin to know what they should do with what you they have been given let every man begin to know what to do with what they have been given somebody knows how to write what have you done with the writing where is the fruit of your writing somebody has the gift of garb what have you done with your speaking where is the fruit of your speaking can you cry out God grant me wisdom to roast what I took in hunting God bless somebody with a car and somebody is complaining this car is not the car I want this is not the right one can you say God in the name of Jesus grant me wisdom to turn this car into a solution to somebody where is the fruit of my car where is the fruit of my house where is the fruit of what God has blessed me with where is the fruit of my job who is being blessed by what God has given to me 
Ah, is your game going to spoil? Is your game going to get rotten because you did not roast it? Can somebody pray and say, God, grant me wisdom to build. Grant me wisdom to roast. Grant me wisdom, oh God, to turn the raw material into something that is useful, that is functional, that my world needs, that is a solution to a problem in my world. Spiritual things are practical, people of God. Spiritual things are practical. Spiritual things are practical. They are not up in the air. They are not up in the air. The word was made flesh. The word was made flesh. Every word that we are praying, we can make it, it can become flesh. It can be something that somebody can handle. It can be something that somebody can relate to. That is what our Christianity should be. Relatable. Can you pray and say, God, that which you have given to me, let it not end in Christianese, but let it become something that is relatable. Grant me diligence, wisdom to be diligent, to make it relatable, to spread the gospel through the giftings within me. Let the help me to turn it into fruit. Fruit that will abide. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next place in that scripture, it says, and by understanding it is established. And by understanding it is established. I think this is where, when we talk about fruits that abide. Fruits that abide comes with understanding. So when a system works consistently, men go, men come. People go, people come. Changes are made in an organization, but there is an understanding of a structure and a system that is working. So it doesn't matter who is there. An understanding has come, and so it is established. I want somebody to pray this afternoon regarding my life, regarding my destiny. Father, grant me understanding so that that which I have taken in, in hunting, I can roast it and I can establish it as fruit from one generation to another because there is an understanding that this thing is food to feed many. I can replicate it again and again because I have understanding. I can establish it again and again because I have understanding. Is somebody praying? Oh, spiritual things ought not to be up in the air. Something that people do not understand, but they should look at you and you should be an epistle written in the hearts of men. People should look at you and say, now I know what to do by watching this one. I now understand what they understand understand and I can establish a few things. The word becomes flesh in my life. Is somebody praying? The word becomes flesh in my life. We cannot just stop at the testimony and say, yes, God gave me game in hunting. No, no, no. After he gave you game in hunting, how did you make it fruit for people to eat from? How did you establish it? Where were you diligent? Were you diligent or did you leave it because you were slothful? Can somebody pray and say, God, God, make me diligent to transform the raw material that you have blessed me with into into solutions and leko sataleya for my generation for my community for the people around me let the word become flesh are you praying let the word become flesh 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 promises are promises hey only in the air but when they are be when when promises have been obtained, they become flesh. Somebody can say that this man that was promised a house, I now see the house. This man that was promised a car, I now see the car. This man that was promised a business, I can see it bringing fruit. Is somebody crying out to God? Let your word over my life become flesh. Let the prophecies become flesh. Let the promises become flesh. The game you took in hunting is of no use to any man until they can eat what you have roasted. What is the use of, 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 of a bloody game until you roast it and it is edible for all to eat? Can you pray and say, God, grant me wisdom and understanding to roast what I took in hunting, to turn the wrong 
material into something that is beneficial to all. Let my testimony move from being up in the air to being something that men can touch, they can handle. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Before we take the next scripture and pray through, I just want to say this here. Sometimes when you say that God promised me, I have not seen it yet. You need to look again. You need to look, look again. It is possible that the Lord has delivered his part to you. And it is time for you to play your part, roasting the game, roasting the game. You ask for a job. He gave you a job, but you are saying this is not the job that I want. But is it the job that will birth the destiny that God has called you to? Can you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I obtain promises. I obtain promises by faith and by patience. I obtain promises. I obtain everything you spoke about. The word becomes flesh. The word becomes flesh. The game I took in hunting becomes roasted meat for men to eat. That is when it makes sense. When it is just roast, when it's, when it's just bloody game, it doesn't mean anything to anybody. But when you've roasted it and men can eat from it and benefit from it, then your testimony is solid. Then your testimony is established. Can somebody pray and say, God, help me to be diligent. Help me to be diligent. Help me to be the wise man that is strong. Help me to be that man of knowledge that increases strength, that turns the raw material into something that is beneficial to my world. Oh, In the name of Jesus. Amen. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. Yeah, that means you start by being strong in your diligence, by turning that game into roasted and meat, by turning that that raw material God gave you into something that somebody can see by turning the voice God gave you into a song that many can sing along with. That's how you that's how you are strong. Then the Bible says a man of knowledge increases strength. As the Lord begins to give you more knowledge, you begin to increase in strength. You, you go from the level of just roasting that beef into packaging it into things that people can eat that can go from one nation to the other. It leaves your local sphere and it gets international. Why? Because you increase in knowledge. Can somebody pray this afternoon and say, God, I am a wise man. I am strong. I can turn this um, um, this game that I took in hunting. I can roast it. But God, I want to increase in knowledge. I want to increase in knowledge. Father, by knowledge, let me increase in strength and do much more and do much more and do much more and do much more. And we are not made to be ordinary. We are not made to be ordinary. The oil on your head can be multiplied. The graces on your life can go beyond local, being local to being international. Birds can come under the shade of your tree. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Still in line with our prayers, we are still praying. Oh, glory be to God. <laughs> Woo. God says in Genesis 1 28, this was one of the first instructions we were given as mankind, and it's supposed to be replicated across generations. He said in Genesis 1 verse 28, and God blessed them. Uh, can somebody declare, I am blessed? Hallelujah. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Hey, people of God, you are not meant to be ordinary. 
the 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 birds the birds of the air the living things that move upon the earth they are waiting for you to move and they are waiting for you to they are waiting to take instructions from you hallelujah sometimes we stop at being fruitful we don't multiply he said be fruitful then he said multiply then he said replenish the earth your your testimony is not supposed to stop at i am fruitful the lord has made me fruitful no after you have become fruitful you are now supposed to multiply you are not supposed to stop at multiplying you're supposed to go into replenishing so that when something finishes you are the one they come to to say it's finished well, how can we replenish how can we supply it again Ah, and after you have finished replenishing you are not supposed to stop at replenishing now you are supposed to subdue there's something that i always say i say that the earth has a high potential of being rebellious and this is why i say this humor humorously that that's why when you cut grass um, you come again in about a week or two time, you find out that the grass has grown. The enemy must be subdued. The enemy wants to see whether you have enough capacity to keep him subdued. And that is why your fruitfulness is not supposed to end at the testimony of hallelujah, the Lord made me fruitful. After you are fruitful, you then multiply. Can somebody begin to pray Genesis 1 28 and say, Father, I thank you for blessing me with fruitfulness. I move from fruitfulness to multiplication. I move from multiplication to replenishing i move from replenishing to subduing your testimony is not supposed to stop when you bring the game in when you've hunted the game and you have found it your testimony is supposed to move from being fruitful to multiplying after you've caught the game then you roast it then you think again you increase in knowledge you increase in strength and say what can i do so that this game can reach beyond my locality how can i roast this game what understanding do i need to multiply hey god is speaking to somebody's business right now god is speaking to somebody's ministry right now god is speaking to somebody's idea right now can you pray and say i move this beyond fruitfulness to multiplication to replenishing to subduing in the name of jesus Jesus, words are supposed to birth things. We are not just supposed to be Christian speaking words. The words have to become flesh. The words have to become flesh. When you say you are blessed, what does that mean? It means you are fruitful. It means, it means that you multiply. It means that from multiplication, you begin to replenish. It means that from replenishing, you begin to subdue. It means that from subduing, you begin to have dominion over fish, over fowl, over every living thing. Father, Lord God, let the blessing of my life upon my, upon my life become flesh. Let it become flesh. Let it become flesh. Let it become flesh. Let men be able to touch it. Let them be able to handle it. Let them be able to eat of it. In the name of Jesus, I move from just being fruitful to multiplying. I move from multiplying to replenishing. When they say it is finished I am they will say do whatever she tells you to do do whatever he tells you to do because we can replenish wine that gets finished I I move from fruitfulness to multiplication to replenishing to subduing to dominion in the name of Jesus Excuse me. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. And then I multiply. My fruitfulness, uh, it moves to multiplication. When there is fruit on my tree, somebody will not come tomorrow and they don't find the fruit. Rather, they will find that the fruit has multiplied because the Lord gives me understanding 
to multiply the fruit in the name of Jesus. And then by my multiplication, I begin to replenish the earth. I begin to replenish the earth. I begin to replenish the earth. And when the earth wants to rebel and say that it doesn't have enough, I subdue it with my replenishing. With my replenishing, I silence it by replenishing and saying that there is more where this came from. As the kato bragada, rekete ke barakata, rekete ke baragada gaboro godeya, rakata lagada. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. <coughs> People of God, if our Christianity is just, I am blessed. If our Christianity is just words that people cannot relate to, then we haven't done much. Then we haven't done much. We have to create these words that are creating realities we have to lay hold on it we have to not just stop at the testimony of i've gotten the game in hunting we have to multiply it we have to roast the game and then ensure that that game it becomes much more to people can somebody pray and say father in the name of jesus my life oh god the words of god upon my life it becomes flesh it becomes flesh. <coughs> It becomes flesh. It becomes flesh. It becomes flesh in the name of Jesus. It becomes flesh. It becomes flesh. It becomes flesh. I will not live an ordinary life. The word of God upon my life. It becomes flesh. The dreams that I talk of, they will become a reality. They will become fruit that men can see, that can be multiplied. Fruit that can be multiplied. Fruit that men can eat of. In the name of Jesus. The oil upon my head, it will multiply. The graces upon my life, it will multiply. There are those that will come to eat of my tree. Are you praying this? Are you praying this? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We have a few minutes before we end. If there we have a few minutes before we end. If there is somebody who has been praying with us and you do not know the lord or you once knew the lord and you lost passion for him because you were praying and you were not seeing results ah this afternoon the lord wants your heart back and he wants to teach you how to take the game you took in hunting and to turn it into something you can roast and to multiply it and to replenish the earth and to have dominion he wants to make you that person and if you want to agree with god this afternoon i want you to say this prayer after me because you can do this in god and do it right can you say father in the name of jesus i come to you and i hand you my heart i give my life to you i rededicate my life to you and i'm saying father these things that i have heard today that it is possible for me to stop and be frustrated at the point of just taking the game in hunting and then it will get rotten and i will say god did nothing for me i can trans i can move from that point to roasting it and then to multiply and then to replenish and then to have dominion father lord god today i hand my heart back to you and i want to become that man and that woman who is fruitful who multiplies who has dominion who replenishes the earth in the name of jesus father if I ask you to take me and make me into this person. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you have labored upon this altar, you will be a first partaker of what the Lord has helped us to pray this afternoon. Can you say, Father, Lord God, the word becomes flesh in my life. The word becomes flesh in my life. I will not just be someone who spoke it and spoke it and spoke it, but the word will become flesh. The dreams will come true. The game that I took in hunting, it will be roasted. Men will eat of it. Men will ask me how I got it, how I got it, how I multiplied. I will be a testament that I can be blessed by God and it can show. I can be blessed by God and it will show. I can be blessed by God and I'll be moved from the dunk hill and my feet will be upon the rock with him to stay in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord is going to be transforming lives based on these words. The word will become flesh in you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. God bless you all for praying. You are first partakers of what he's doing by his word in the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. Apostle Goodhart and Pastor Bimbo are always eager to hear your testimonies because we believe that when men pray, that there is always a result. When men pray, there is always a result. And so he's expecting your testimonies to say, I prayed this prayer. I prayed upon this altar and I saw, I saw a result. I saw this is my fruit of praying. And you can send your testimony to Apostle Goodhart at gmail.com or you can send it to GPPA testimonies at gmail.com or you can call 0704-922-2234 or send a WhatsApp an SMS only to 0805-223-4444. Somebody will engage with you and we will glorify God for your testimonies. God bless you all for praying. God bless you and honor you and make you a first partaker of the prayers you have made upon this altar this afternoon. Hallelujah. God bless you. Oh, the children of Israel had been lamenting in bondage, in Egyptian bondage. God said, Moses, I have heard their cry. I have seen their affliction. He says, hear this, man. I said, I am come down to deliver them. I am sending you. My coming down is to send Moses. You who was drawn out of the water, you will be used to draw my people out of bondage. Apostles and prophets are God's rescue agents. God's people were building. They were being terrorized, harassed, terrified from building. Ezra 6 says, guess what? The prophet began to prophesy. As they prophesied, they were building and they finished the building. Prophets are God's rescue agents. Have you, have you ever struggled with mental health, depression, fear, marital pitfalls, physical health challenges, career challenges, indecision, other issues of life, or would you just like to strengthen your spirituality? Then join men and women across the globe, breaking the limits and soaring high on the global prophetic prayer altar with Apostle Goodhart's Obi Equipment. Even in these challenging times, every weekday from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Greenwich Median Time plus one, and 12 noon to 1 p.m. Greenwich Median Time plus one. Available on internet radio at www.radio.rogic.org and on YouTube at GPPA TV, on Periscope at Goodhart's O Equipment. On Instagram at Apostle Goodheart and on Facebook at Apostle Goodheart. The Global Prophetic Prayer Altar. The surest way to get timely resources to stabilize your life in every area. Your unmerited mercy or favor made available to us. We give you praise. We